thanks for joining us. Well, the house lights have been dimmed and the curtains come down on the performing arts like never before. As part of France 24's week-long series on culture versus COVID, today we're taking a look at the impact of the health crisis on theatre, dance and opera. Well, joining us in the studio, playwright, performer and director Marion Seffer. Marion, thanks so much for being here. Now, can you give us an overview of how the last year has been for you? What have you been able to stage and crucially how, in what conditions? So my luck was that I was rehearsing a new a new play and uh, this is a really specific play. I had the idea of that in September 2019 and I chose to make this play both for Instagram and for the theatre, so for both audiences at the same time. So I was rehearsing that and then we had the luck that the creation was meant to be in September and in October. So at the specific time where we could uh, go back to the theatre and uh, so we could really experience it both in front of a real audience and uh, an Instagram audience and I was really thrilled about that, about how it will work because I think it was the first time that uh, somebody from the theatre make makes a show really specifically for Instagram. Well, indeed, your latest performance, uh, Jean d'Arc, has been hailed for its innovative use of the virtual space. It meshes well with social media. So let's have a look at it. So that show, which was a hybrid performance, is currently 100% virtual. Some would say that this is the future of the arts because it's more accessible, it's less dependent on being in European capitals to uh, experience it. So do you think that this time could be, in fact, uh, an opportunity to break with convention, to be more inventive? I don't know, uh, because I think that what we are really missing is uh, the, um, the experience of being together in the public space. I think that nowadays the question is really the question of the public space and what we can do and not do in the public space. Uh, for me, um, the idea of going to Instagram was really... Um, Really, um, yes, an idea of opening my theatre uh, for a younger audience and just to represent because the story of the piece is uh, a story of a young teenager which is called Jeanne and which is 16 and uh, which has been um, bullied and um, who is facing harassment about her virginity and uh, so she's, she goes live on Instagram just to speak up. And um, so the social media are part of the story. And I think this is the point. This is not just a gadget or something that we use to be more modern or something like that. It's more a way to embody and to represent uh, something that is really, that is part of our lives and that we don't usually see on, Insta on, on, on the theatrical stages. And for me, this is really important that a younger and um, uh, that audience and that, um, yes, anybody could connect uh, to the piece and, and that, it, that it's connected to the daily life. Mm -hmm. You just have to make a, uh, a daily gesture to go on Instagram to have access to the piece. Indeed. You joined your peers recently to protest against the closure of cultural spaces to the wider public, as you say, and the manifesto you had roughly translates as open up. Now, yesterday, Culture Minister Roselyne Bachelot announced that festivals would be allowed to go ahead this summer with very strict conditions. A maximum of 5,000 people sat down with social distancing. Do you see this as a sign of hope that things are, in fact, starting to open up? Yes, but uh, this is. Uh, but let's see how it goes because you know uh, what we see nowadays is that uh, big institutions are still on, are still alive and they are still going on well, but small groups, small companies are really suffering and are disappearing. Young artists can't create, and um, this is really 
Yes, I think it would it would let a mark in the arts, and it will be really dangerous for the cultural and social life of mm -hmm. our country. Indeed. Well, going from limited gatherings to full-scale productions now, puppeteer and director Basil Twist was able to stage performances of Titan et l'Aurore at the Opera Comique here in Paris last month, complete with singers, musicians, technicians, but no one sitting in the stalls whatsoever. That show was streamed on specialist platform Medici TV. Well, Basil told us a bit more about how that was possible. <laughs> It was just a month and a half before the pandemic actually hit. So the plan fell in place and they said it was Tito and Aurore and I and I agreed and then I thought, God, this will never happen out of the pandemic. And I was as amazed as anybody when it actually did happen. I'm a puppeteer by training, and I was trained in France at the um, in Charleville Mezières at the Ecole de la Marionnette, which has been there for years. I approach opera with a different tact, and and I think that 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 puppetry is uniquely suited for opera because it um, it actually takes us away from the um, sort of the, the realism of performance or theater. Puppetry isn't necessarily appropriate for social distancing. You know, uh, y y you still need people involved in puppetry and even in the kind of puppetry that I do sometimes you need a lot more people and there's a lot of people working very closely together so we we just had to work you know we worked with masks we worked you know with the sort of sanitary protocols to keep people safe while we were working but then when we actually performed everyone was tested um during all the you know major uh, dress rehearsals and performances so that people could perform without masks. It's in particular the Opera Comique and the leadership there that is so committed to keeping the art on stage, but it's also um, uh, the, the essential nature of art in French culture. I'm extremely lucky that I got to do this. The United States operates very much on a bottom line in terms of ticket sales and, of course, liability and all sorts of issues that kind of tie things up for institutions to be able to commit to taking that kind of risks. France has always been a model of the importance of art. In the United States, it's about the audience. Broadway, you can't have Broadway unless there's an audience because there's no way of the bottom line and the money adding up. There's always a kind of a conversation about whether puppetry is having a renaissance. And um, I think puppetry is kind of constantly being reborn and rediscovered. Um, and at the same time, it always kind of happily slides back to the margins. There's definitely the possibility to use puppetry in, you know, in, um, in sort of uh, virtual reality or enhanced reality um, to use uh, technology for puppetry. But I, I actually think that we have plenty of screens, we have plenty of sort of dazzling technology that we don't even, we have no idea of how to understand it. But there's something about puppetry that, in fact, I feel like we're going to be even more thirsty for it because it gives us a real sense of magic in a very human and simple and low-tech way. People are thirsty for that intimate and soulful low-tech connection.
Now, Marion, Basil speaks there of the power of low-tech or simple art forms. Many of your past creations have been quite stripped down. Uh, for example, your show Du Sal is quite minimalist, but it brings in some very unexpected elements into contemporary theatre. Can you tell us more about that piece? It's a piece, it's a piece about uh, the encounter and the relationship uh, between I and uh, two young artists that I discover, the dancer Janice Bielleux and uh, the rapper uh, Original Letty. And so I made, it was their first appearance on stage and then I made the piece with them and around them and for them just to let, um, yeah, let them speak let the space for their arts and for their different aspects of the personalities. Mm, that's a form of expression that we don't always see in contemporary theatre and that we will be seeing coming up soon as well. I'll give you the details in just a second. Thank you so much for joining us, Marion. Thank you. Now let's wrap up the show with a look at Marion Sieffer's upcoming version of Du Sale, which is programmed for early May here in Paris at the Théâtre de la Villette. Remember, you, you can get more arts and culture on our website and we're on social media too. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this. Si tu m'as pas vu danser, tu peux pas me connaître. Excuse the sip and job brew. Got me so high, hardly know what to do. Been waiting, y'all. Glad you finally came through. Celebration of yourself, family, and friends, too. Crew, who said it's taboo for me to show my feelings? Don't you know I'm loving you? Peace, release, stress at the doormat.